Michael the Archangel is depicted in the Bible in the texts of Daniel, Jude, and Revelation as a fighter angel who contends in spiritual combat. The word archangel means angel of the highest rank. Most angels in the Bible are described as messengers, whereas Michael is represented in all three books as contending, resisting, or standing against evil spirits and principalities. Jude 1, 3 to 10. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immortality and deny Jesus Christ our only Sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immortality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil, about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Deuteronomy 34, 1-12 documents the death of Moses but does not describe this event. In particular Jewish texts, the devil argued with the archangel Michael over possession of Moses' body. Michael refused to presumptuously render judgment. Instead, he simply announced the Lord's rebuke. The language of this rebuke matches Zechariah 3.2, where the Lord rebukes Satan for his accusations against Joshua, the high priest. Zechariah 3, 1-10, New King James Version Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Here, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon the stone 
are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Despite his great power, Michael remains completely submissive to the Lord. The righteous angels have a rank and are submissive to authority. Taking into consideration the strength of Michael the archangel, his submission to God is all the more beautiful. We can see that submission is never meant to take away an individual's strength or purpose or value. The strength of angel Michael was not under dispute, as the last mention of Michael the archangel appears in Revelation 12.7, as Satan is thrown out of heaven. Revelation 12.7-8 And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they never did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Michael and the forces of heaven defeat the dragon, Satan, and the devil is hurled to the earth. There, enraged, Satan went off to wage war against those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Revelation 12, 17 Even Michael the archangel did not fight the enemy on his own authority, but spoke in the Lord's name. Mature leaders swallow their egos and acknowledge God as their source of power. They walk in his authority with confidence, but never take credit for it. Faith allows them to stretch, whereas humility allows them to stoop. Jude uses the word ungodly four times to guide his readers into a God-pleasing lifestyle. Jude, like all good leaders, recognizes the importance of both positive and negative reinforcement. He inspires his readers to do the right thing by sharing the benefits of righteous living as well as the consequences of wrongdoing. Take note of the two sides of this motivational coin. Lucifer was a God-created being, and he appeared to be the highest creature that God created. Then evil was discovered within him. Don't think that being evil entails going out and stealing something. The evil in him was that he challenged his will against God's will. He was aroused by pride and desired to be independent of God. He truly believed he could dethrone God, at least from a portion of his universe. Michael didn't curse Satan. He didn't call him a long list of names. I'm sure that many of us would have been perfectly willing to have done that. Why? Michael regarded his office and position with reverence. Lucifer had been created as the highest creature. This is a lesson that both you and I must learn. Many Christians have yet to learn to bow even to God. You and I, my friend, are creatures. He is the creator. What gives you and I the right to question anything he does? Don't get me wrong, we all struggle with doubts. But we must acknowledge that God is not only the creator, but also the redeemer. He is the one who cares for us. But our God is exalted, holy and exalted. He is a righteous and just God. He never makes a blunder. He never makes a mistake. Everything he does is right, so you and I can put our trust in him. But do we actually do that? Do we acknowledge his authority? Do we value his person? When men are called to account, the Lord Jesus Christ will say, You said, Lord, Lord, but you did not do what I commanded. Each went his or her own way and did what was right in his or her own eyes. This is the image of humanity. So, how about you? How am I doing today? What an example Michael the Archangel is for us.